Hi guys, today we are going to talk about the latest and so far greatest SMSL DAC that I've personally ever tried and that's SMSL SU10. I've recently complained about SMSL producing too many models, but I cannot stop myself from trying them out because as you probably already know if you follow this channel that some SMSL DACs like M500 MK2 are my favorites in some price categories and I do think that they are value kings if, and if you want to call them overachievers. And now I have SMSL's latest SU10 which is 900 US dollars and it comes with really, really attractive tech inside. Now, while I talk about it, I'll put everything on the screen because I'm not preparing these speeches. I do not read from anything in front of me. I just sit in here and I talk about everything. Some things I read few days ago, some things I read few weeks ago. So pay attention to the screen. If I make a mistake, it will be corrected there. So. SMSL SU10 uses two Sabre DAC chips. Up until recently, those were actually flagship Sabre chips. And SMSL is using two of them. And it uses all of their channels, and I think it's 21 op amps in its output stage. Is that important for the sound? Yeah, in my experience, the actual output stage that analog output section is more important than the DAC chip itself. Then, if we are talking about the power supply, that's also quite important. And in cheaper DAC models, manufacturers will often offload that expense to you, the customer, because they'll say you should use 5 volts DC. But how good and how clean and stable it is, it's up to you. So you can buy a small wall wart you can power it from a PC or you can buy a good linear power supply or maybe just a low noise switching power supply. But in SU10, we have linear power supply already. So you just connect it to your mains. And even more than that, there are two uh, transformers inside, one for the digital section of the deck and the other one for the analog section of the deck. But you know that I'm not uh, one to talk much about tech specs and uh, tech features of a deck because in the end, what's most important is how does that DAC actually sounds? But just before we move to that, I wanted to mention connectivity. And I'll be really quick here because basically any digital input that you can imagine, including AES, EBU, balanced input or I squared S, and of course, everything that's more usual than that is supported. And when it comes to the output, expectedly at this price point, you have both single-ended output over RCAs, and balanced output over XLRs. Single-ended line output is of a 2.6 volt variety, meaning that the balanced output is uh, 5.1 volts, if memory serves me well here, which is a little bit on the higher side, but that's okay. Having higher voltages is good, especially if you maybe want to use this DAC as a preamp 2, connected directly to the power amp which you can because there is volume attenuation and there is a remote control provided with this unit. I do not test that part of a DAC because so far I have never met a DAC, at least the ones that I'm personally testing at these price points, that have a preamp section that can match any decent dedicated preamp. And any time I would try to use that internal section to control the volume, I was not satisfied with just the lushness and dynamics of the sound. Using an external preamp or simply integrated amp that has its own preamp already integrated on the amp side is usually a better solution, at least in my experience. And just before we continue talking about it, I'm going to quickly turn it on 
And this unit doesn't have a power switch in the back. So as soon as you connect the power cable, it goes live. As you'll probably see in a second. Yeah, it's powering on. And I just noticed that I didn't remove a protective uh, plastic foil from the screen. So let's do that together. I know that brings a lot of you great joy. So, ah, yeah. By the way, the screen itself is covered by some sort of anti-scratch glass. You know, these like gorilla glass type of things that they put on our smartphones. So that's nice because you don't have to worry about scratching it easily. That's why you have no need for this. Please don't be one of those guys that keeps foil and packaging on their deck five years after you purchased it. Or in case of all my cousins and aunts and uncles, they keep their remote controls in a plastic bag they came in. Ugh, that gives me chills. And this being an SMSL back means that it has a quite rich feature set that you can tinker with and yeah, just, just try out. Among them, you can adjust the brightness of the screen, for example, or you can set it to go off after some time that you can also adjust uh, depending on your taste. Then quite normally, you can choose between several digital filters, but something that's still, uh, as far as I know it, quite unique to SMSL is that you can choose several different sound colors. I like using standard one that's like not engaging any sort of DSP and sound coloring, but you can choose to, to play with these, knock yourself out. And then there is a deep PLL setting that I always recommend. You should try to adjust to the minimum possible level. And if your connection is stable that way, you will gain a little bit of sound fidelity and just sound stage clarity and depth. And if your connection is not stable enough on the minimum setting, use the one that's the lowest possible, but makes your connection a stable one. By default, it's like five or seven number, but I always lower that to the minimum and gain a little bit of fidelity at no additional cost. Now, all of that out of the way, let's talk about the sound. SMSL SU10 sounds fantastic. It absolutely does. I've connected it to my stereo setup and even without any sort of burn-in period or my ears adjusting to the new sound period, I've realized first thing that it sounds big and lush and just decluttered. Sound stage is wide and everything has enough room, enough space around it. And each tone just sounds, as I said, full and lush and present. And I don't even think in terms of like baseline and mid range and highs because everything is well connected together. And a tone of a guitar let's say, sounds like a tone of a guitar. There is enough weight in it, meaning that the bass line is doing its job properly. There is that palpable core of a string, if it's a bass string. And then there is there's full and rich mid-range that's very informative. The inner texture of a tone is, is laid bare in front of you. It's very easily noticeable. But then the same goes for outlining of the tones. Edges are clear and crisp, but not overly sharp, not overly etched to sound artificial. They're just as clean as they should be. High frequencies are well extended. There is plenty of air, plenty of extension. Everything that you need to hear from high frequencies, like that moment when the mic is turning on and you hear that low noise, that low bright noise that we often perceive as atmosphere, it just lights up. 
and singer doesn't start to sing yet and you hear that slight recording noise, you'll hear that through SMSL. But it doesn't sound overly bright either. It, it doesn't lean too heavily on that. It's just there, it's informative, it's present, and you cannot say that this is a dark sounding deck or rolled off sounding deck, but it's definitely not aggressive or sharp sounding either. And as I mentioned, these well-balanced mid-range and lower frequencies will make sure that everything sounds well put together. And for example, I, one of the first songs that I've listened to was this one. And it's a cover. It even says something like love songs, audiophile vocals, things like that. I should be embarrassed, but I'm not really, because yeah, I like this cover. And this is a well-recorded vocal, but with SU-10 it sounds so nice and so lush and upfront, but not in any sort of annoying way. It doesn't shout to your face, it's not too aggressively forward. It's just big and present in the room and lush and filled with sandy texture of a vocal, but also it's made palpable, it's made physically present in the room and, and has plenty of space around it. It's just the type of sound that's hard to dislike or even find any fault to it. And I then moved to some sort of more upbeat type of songs, for example, like this one, just to, to find out if this deck maybe sounds lush and big and, you know, pleasant that way, but doesn't have the speed and dynamics that it needs to have for these music genres. No, that's not the case. This is a speedy, quick sounding deck. It's resolving. If you put a song like that, it will be pump, pump, pump. You thought you can confuse me with your fast rhythm? No, sir. After all, I am based on a Sabre deck chip. But funnily enough, it doesn't sound like a Sabre. This is the first deck, probably, that I've ever tested that I almost for sure would have guessed some other type of DA chip. Maybe AK, maybe even Burr Brown, but I wouldn't say it's Sabre. Because even though it's very clean, fast and precise, it doesn't have that laserly focused analytical thing going on. It just sounds wider, more dispersed, lusher than, than your average Sabre-based deck. And that brings me back to why I don't like to talk about tech specs a lot, because they don't mean much in the end. The implementation is the king. And yeah, I have just touched that sound staging a little bit. This is an unusually wide and spacious sounding deck. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I don't think that I've ever heard any deck, at least Delta Sigma deck, up to 1000 US dollars that sounds this widespread and this relaxed as SU-10. Aries 2, Danafrips Aries 2 sounds equally wide, maybe even a little bit wider, and it definitely sounds deeper, but that's an R2R deck. And it also cannot compare with SU-10 when it comes to just quick transients. Uh, with when it comes to edge clarity and also when it comes to dynamics. Aries 2 can actually do big swings, big dynamic swings quite well. But in terms of microdynamics and things happening quickly, like if you have a fast-paced rhythm and drum section, things like that, it tends to equalize, to smooth over those dynamic swings, like almost doing a little bit of compression so everything sounds similarly equally loud. And that's really smooth and present, but a jump factor, just fun factor of SU-10 is noticeably better. While at the same time, uh, you do get really wide sound stage, but not as deep as with Aries 2. 
Ares II can stretch soundstage further back. But as I said, it will sound less dynamic, uh, more muddy in the bass line. Bass line will be full and really pleasant, but it will not be as controlled as quick. If you have a really, really skilled bass player that plays bass not only to give, you know, the background ding, 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 bass to some like mainstream song, but he's actually making music by quickly playing the, the, the bass, maybe the bass guitar, maybe double bass. That will sound like a fat man walking with Aris too. And it will sound like a capable, athletic, muscly man doing things with more precision and with greater speed through SU10. And in my mind and to my ears, even though I, I love Aris too, and I, I really, some of its qualities are absolutely astonishing, I have to say that SU10 is objectively, at least to my ears, clearly better sounding deck. Especially if you're not only into slow acoustic music, but you're also into fast rhythm, fast paced and more dynamic sounding music. Then next I'll move to SMSL's own, but half the price, M500 MK2. That one is really my favorite below 500s. It's just a mighty good sounding deck. It's full, it's lush, it's, it's tonally correct. But compared directly to SU10, it does sound a little bit softer and less resolving around the edges, like almost that tones through M500 MK2 can sometimes sound a little bit bloated. It's not a lot, but just a little bit. Whereas SU10 can make those same tones sound cleaner and clearer without sounding more analytical and thinner. They're equally lush, but somehow more precise and more neat. When it comes to the sound staging, the SU10 actually spreads even wider image and arranges all of those tones slightly further apart. There's more room in between them and around them. In a speaker system, that's quite sed seductive quality. Having a sound stage that reminds me on R2R decks a little bit, but having all the speed and agility and, and resolution of a good, good Delta Sigma deck. So that's it in a nutshell. Both M500 MK2 and SU10 ha have great tonality, that full, lush, natural sounding instruments and vocals, everything is, is present and detailed, but the SU10 sounds even cleaner and even wider and bigger. Then moving to up until now, probably my favorite up to $1,000 DAC is Topping D90 LE. And that one was just a touch more capable in my opinion. And like when I'm trying to be objective, just a touch more capable than M500 MK2 by offering equally wide sound stage but being slightly deeper, slightly more spacious in that depth dimension and a little bit cleaner and better controlled than M500 MK2. Again, the difference was really small, but I had to give a win to D90 Alley. And this time SMSL SU10 offers a little bigger leap compared to M500 MK2, meaning it jumps over the topping D90 LE. It's basically equally resolving, but everything that feels slightly smaller on D90 LE. And you can call that more focused because it's literally, physically, tones are happening in a smaller space. And that would be a definition of more focused sound. But SU10 just stretches 
all of those tones a little big, bit. It makes them sound a bit bigger and it fills them with a little bit more inner tone texture. And you notice that inner tone texture with more ease, those small vibrations of a string, that air flow from saxophone or a trumpet that's all a little bit richer sounding with SU-10 than it is with D90LE. And uh, as I said, because everything is a little bit bigger, so is the whole sound stage. I don't feel that it's actually deeper than with D90LE, but it is definitely wider and to some degree taller. It's just like having a bit bigger canvas. And Again, I think I maybe used this word uh, already, but that sounds more seductive, more pleasant, more appealing. And with that, I name SU-10 the new king of the up to 1000 US dollars category. This is a DAC to beat, at least among the ones that I have personally heard. But this is a mighty good, mighty natural sounding DAC. And that made me wonder, like, how far can SU-10 reach before it stopped? Somebody stop SMSL, please. And I've compared it directly to the musician Pegasus. It's uh, 1100 US dollars R2R. If you haven't seen that review, please go to my channel, just type in musician Pegasus and watch that review. Because that's an R2R but the one that leans much more on precision and details than, for example, Danafrips, Eris 2 does. And these two are very interesting because that's an R2R deck that sounds big and lush and very natural, but it did everything it could to have the highest speed possible and cleanest and clearest sound possible with that technology. On the other hand, this is a Delta Sigma DAC that you would expect to be really clean and crisp sounding, but then SMSL did everything in its power to make it bigger, lusher, more natural and easygoing sounding. And true enough, these two DACs sound more alike than they sound different, in my opinion at least. Okay, they do not sound the same, but they are really, really uh, close to each other. Musician Pegasus has a little bit deeper sound stage still. It has that advantage. And to some degree, it does like edges and details sound even more smooth. If you think about edginess, there's none of that uh, with Musician Pegasus. There's texture, there's details, but all of that sounds perfectly analog many would say. I'm not a big analog guy, but yeah, it sounds really, really analog. SU-10 comes really close to that, but it has just a little bit more sharpness and, and liveliness around the edges than Musician Pegasus. It doesn't sound sharp, edgy in any way, but if you directly compare it to the Musician Pegasus, it will sound just a touch more natural and a little bit deeper sound stage and some things will happen a little bit further away from your speakers. That said, SU-10 counters with, yeah, slightly cleaner edges and quicker transients. And this is, I don't know, pretty, they're on a pretty equal footing. If you are a R2R sound aficionado, is that the word? I think it is. If you like how R2Rs sound in general, you'll probably prefer Musician Pegasus a little bit because of that natural analogy sound and slightly deeper sound. But you wouldn't lose much, if any. It depends on you, on how you notice things and the rest of your system. You wouldn't lose almost any detailing that you would get with SU-10. With SU-10, on the other hand, you would approach to that spaciousness and lushness of Musician Pegasus, but with a slightly more forward sound staging that's not as deep 
it doesn't go that far behind your speakers, but on the other hand, it does sound a little bit cleaner and just a little bit faster and more nimble when it comes to those quick transients with lively rhythms. It's a really small difference, but it has an edge there. Me personally, I do like how artwares sound and I, I would maybe rather own Musician Pegasus, but it's just nitpicking. It's totally nitpicking. And you have to have in mind that Pegasus is slightly more expensive and it's a completely Spartan deck. It doesn't have a preamp, a remote, it doesn't do lots of things that this SMSL does. So yeah, if you take that into account, SMSL SU10 is putting up whew, a really, really great fight here. And since Musician Pegasus was one of my favorite decks ever, that says a lot about the SU10. And then if you wanted to ask me, but how does it compare with Leather Schumann or Gustard R26? I basically already compared all of those decks with Musician Pegasus in their own review. And you should just watch that and you can basically copy paste it for SU10. Both of these Leather Schumann and Gustard R26 do have their qualities some of them being really spacious and deep sounding. Again, you can watch those reviews, see what I said they're doing better than Musician Pegasus, and the same will be true for what they're doing better than SU10. That said, the differences are small. And if you're not like crazy into this whole audiophile things and listening critically and noticing everything that's happening, you might not even notice most of those differences. So getting back to SU10, this is a mighty great sounding DAC. And even more than that, it's an absolutely great value. Now we have a situation where my favorite DAC up to 500 is SMSL M500 MK2. But my favorite up until 1000 is SU10. And yeah, SMSL has been on a really great streak lately. And as I said in the beginning, I know I criticized them for releasing many models. And I think I had the right to do that because it feels like they're just saturating the market. But on the other hand, they're doing such a good job. They're ju not just flooding the market with average products. They're flooding the market with absolutely fantastic products. So now talking to the competition. Guys, you have to get your beep together because SMSL dominating you like this is not fun. So yeah, I'll be here on this channel and waiting for your response. Let the fight begin. That would be all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you like the video, then click that button, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Also consider becoming a patron, which greatly helps me to maintain this channel and to continue doing this for you. See you next time. Bye.